Welcome to yet another Lumion Advanced tutorial. In the last couple months, I've made a major change in my Lumion rendering workflow that has made my life much easier and has enhanced my capacity with Lumion. I wanted to share this method with you guys. This tutorial goes along well with my Mastering Scene Management tutorial and is going to introduce the benefits of rendering our animation to image sequences instead of straight to video. Now this is a workflow that I don't expect all of you to adopt, but I wanted to share it with you so you can see the potential it has. Now I'm going to use the garden example scene that comes with all Lumion projects, and the examples already have animations all set up. And now I'm going to proceed by rendering out one clip and also an entire animation, the standard traditional way, exporting to an MP4. Now for most small projects, this works perfectly. There's no other reason to do anything else. But then again, there are also projects that could really benefit from this. Unfortunately, not every one of our renders goes perfectly smooth. Sometimes this happens. After 10 hours of rendering right before a deadline, or we find this. Ah, moonwalkers. We forgot to give them move paths. With everything we have to manage in an animation, something always slips. And these would all require extra time re-rendering. There's gotta be another way, right? So now when we go to render, you might have noticed there's a couple tabs up here. I'm going to be talking about going to this images tab and you can see we have pretty much all the same settings here. We also have this custom output that we'll talk about a little bit later and frame range. Now when we hit the check mark, we're giving a couple options for our image type. We could use JPEGs or we can go lossless with PNGs. An important thing to notice is that when we switch to the images tab, our timeline will switch to render frames as opposed to time. Here is our end result, a lot of images. And when we open them up, we can toggle them between them and kind of get an idea of the animation as well. So also keep in mind that all of these images will take more space. Now let's go back to the settings and change the frame rate. Notice how this changes the total number of frames to render. This is something we'll have to be aware of and remember for later. Now when we save our render into frames, we always want to keep it in a folder or else it'll get really messy. Let's render this out again but using JPEGs to see how much space we can save that way. Also on the side note, take a look at the, uh, the folder and all of the images is being created, sped up obviously. So now you're probably thinking, rendering the images looks nice, but how is this actually so much better? Well let me show you. Let's go through another scenario. Say this has been rendering for several hours, and then we find this. Oops. One setting destroyed the entire rendering. If you rely solely on Lumion to produce your animations and not another software, this would mean a full re-render here. But going back to the full clip, we can find the frame numbers that went bad, fix the problem, and render it again at only that range. If we eliminate these extra numbers in the title, like the original name we called this, Lumion will automatically replace only those bad frames. There, we just saved hours of render time in our project that we didn't have. And if Lumion crashes, we just need to find the last frame that was rendered, go start from the next frame after that, and we are good to go. Now let's talk about these custom output options here. We could choose to have any or all of the selected render passes save out to frames along with our animation rendered frames. And these alternate render frames are for some really advanced compositing we can do, but I'll need to cover that in another video. For now, I just want to make sure that you understand that you can do this. Now after all this, you're probably wondering, how do we use these frames? Well, we need another software. So here I have Adobe Premiere Pro, which I use. For Premiere, I can import the frames by finding the folder and checking this box that says image sequence. When it imports, it is automatically converted to an animation for us. We have a setting here that we also need to tweak to set it to the same frame rate that we rendered at. Like I said, it's important to remember that because if not, the timing will be off. All of the video editing software I tried out has a way to import frames and animation like this as well. And I'm using this software called Lightworks, which was free I found online, that also is able to import the same way, as you can see here. There are quite a few others, but I recommend taking a look at this one. Now it's as far as I'm going to go into post-production, I'll leave that for another video. But I want to end on this. Many Lumion users do not plan on using a third-party application to compile their videos and would rather do it all in Lumion. And that's the beauty of Lumion. The biggest drawback to this though is if anything ever goes wrong, the entire sequence will be completely re-rendered every time. 
If you think that this can make the chaos of render time less stressful and more manageable, then I invite you to try this new method. It has really benefited me in my workflow. I'm glad I got to share it with you guys. So until next time.